folks, I'm making a 50 pound batch. Actually, it winds up being a little bit more than 50 pounds because of the other ingredients, but starting off with 50 pounds of sugar, four cups of pollen substitute. I uh, put that through a kind of a coarse sieve, you know, a flour sifter to break it up so that any larger chunks I can just push through with my hands and break those up so it all gets proper moisture throughout it and any other debris winds up on top and I just toss it. All right, four cups of pollen sub. Then we add one cup of sugar. I'm sorry. Then we add one cup of salt. You can use sea salt, Himalayan, whatever. Um, basically, just add minerals in here. You know, the, the bees like salt water. They like chlorine water. I mean, salt water is chlorinated water. It's chlorine makes up one of the components of salt. But um, then we're going to add in four cups of water. Actually, four and a half cups of water. I, it, it winds up being a little bit moist, but we're going for a consistency that's about with um, the damp sand. Um, we're going to put them in these brownie pans. This 50 pound batch makes about 11 to 11 and a half of those brownie pans for these winter bricks. So, four and a half cups of water, one cup apple cider vinegar. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up for a moment while I get my uh, moisture things ready. So if you see any clumps of sugar in here, go ahead and break them up by hand. We've got our dry ingredients pretty well mixed up. The color of the uh, pollen sub in here is pretty consistent throughout the entire mix of sugar, salt, and pollen sub. We've got four cups of water, four and a half cups of water. I'm using hot water out of the tap. One cup apple cider vinegar. going to add my moisture in slowly so that it um, doesn't just clump up in one area and then you have dry areas that don't get moisture. Um, I go ahead and turn on the, the mixer and I'm going to add one cup at a time and I'm just going to pour it in real slowly let it eventually come in. Um, while it's turning at the very beginning it's going to get dusty in here. turn this off for just a second to speak, but I'm going to let this go for maybe uh, 10 minutes or so. Um, it's going to create some of these little clumps, and these are, uh, it's just the sugar and, and where it was a little bit too moist, and so as I can see it, um, I'm just going to reach in here and break them up as it turns, and those will, will uh, disappear eventually. Um, I'm going to use... I had been using a metal scraper, but I use a, a plastic scraper now, a little putty knife. Um, if any, uh, bunches up on the edges and just kind of scrape that out so it doesn't stick to the walls. And then I'll do that again before pouring these into the mold. Whenever I see clumps, I go ahead and just stop it, scrape what I can off the sides and bottom, because it does occasionally stick to there. I think I 
may cut this back on the moisture by about a quarter cup on my next one. So I'm going to go four and a quarter cups instead of four and a half cups. It's just a little on the wet side for my liking. But it allows it to become a pretty hard brick uh, once it dehydrates out. So otherwise it, it might be a little too crumbly. So I'm going to let this go just a few more minutes. There's uh, quite a few of these little bitty sugar snowballs here. So we're going to let those go and break up and as we see them. And So as this is turning, I'm going to have it dumped into a large turkey roasting pan. All right. So we're going to pour this into a, a, a turkey roasting pan. What I like to do is support this uh, cheap tin foil tray with a regular cookie baking pan. Set it on top of that so when I pick it up it's supported all the way across and that's that's going to be our mold for the, for the sugar break. All right so I get enough to work with I'm just going to move this by hand over into here to the size and thickness of the bricks that I want. I've got about two, two and a half inch shims on my hives, so we're gonna go with a pretty good thickness on the, uh, the sugar bricks. Your hives that are really strong are gonna consume this pretty quick. All right, so let's uh, get over here. I've got a board here that I use. Let's get the camera over here. All right, so I've got a board that fits the size of this pan. So I've got my sugar in here about, oh, a little over three quarters of the way up. I tamp it down to settle it. I know I've got a solid surface over here on the legs, so that's why I come over here to this edge. I put this board over here. Smash it down. And we've got a solid surfaced brick, and that's ready to be put in the dehydrator. All right, this cabinet is a, um, it's a workbench on top, but inside was unused, so I use this as my dehydrator. I've got two heat lamps in here, and I'll show you a close-up of those in a moment, and a fan. It's just all about air movement and warmth. Here's a batch of bricks that have been in here for uh, right at 48 hours now. Um, basically, I fill this up and let it sit. I've got two heat lamps, a fan, and then over on the other end, I've got a vent that lets the hot air out. So, And then over here where the electrical comes in for the lights, air comes in. Um, it's not real insulated. I probably need to put some bubble wrap or some foam insulation in to hold the heat in a little better but we still want airflow, so we want warmth and airflow. You know, it's just basically a big dehydrator. So I'm going to pull out my old ones, and then we're going to set the new ones in here. I've got a stack of, this holds about 30 to 35, 33 um, of these bricks. These are hard. I leave them in the pans. Um, that way, if they do break while in transit to the bee yards, uh, then they, they still stay in place, and I can still put them in the hives. And then I bring the foil back and fill them up and start over. Like this one, just pulling it out, it cracked. That's not a big deal. And it was probably a little on the dry side when I made these. So the, the drier they are when you start, the more it's going to crumble. Um, so your moisture level, a little wet on the, the damp sand is, is okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and set this in here. I, Like I say, I used the cookie tray here, 
It helps support it. I'm going to set this in the top rack, and then as I fill this up, I'm going to fill up this side and then move over to this side with my next batch. All these are done, so I'm going to pull them out. This door opens both ways. Some of these I had on my truck yesterday and it started raining last night. So I had to run out, grab them off my truck and throw them back in the dehydrator to, to dry them back out. All right, so complete ones. This cabinet was not full, but I had one, two, three, four. I had uh, about 30. I think those are three stacks of about 10 each with some crumbles in there that I put on my uh, Easy Nukes. So here's the inside. It's just three wooden racks, real easy, homemade, inside a cabinet. There's the exit vent for the hot air that, that rises. Uh, the fan circulates the air. Um, it is warmer down on this end where the heat lamps are. Let's open the door and show you. All right, so on this end, we've got two heat lamps and a fan for circulation. And then there's our first one of this batch for today that is uh, getting ready to start dehydrating down. So I'm going to close this up, get the rest of mine put into molds, and get them started to dehydrate. I don't sell these. I got nothing to lose by showing people my process, and I think it's great that a lot of people will do things on their own. Doing it yourself is not for everyone. I understand that. For those folks, you can buy them from uh, retailers that do make them. Just to understand what you're getting into as far as costs of materials. A little bit of labor, equipment for uh, getting them dehydrated down, whether you use your own kitchen at home or uh, convert a cabinet in your garage to a dehydrator. It's about the freedom to do it the way you need to do it for you. And that is uh, why my website is Bohemian Utopia, because it's about freedom. Doing it your way. All right, I've already got 11 made from this batch. I think I'm going to use a little thinner than I normally do. And that's okay. time of year I tend to hit the hives about every three weeks instead of every four to six weeks because if the hive is going to perish I don't want it to be from starving and it does happen we're in 
the south. Where I'm, in, I'm in North Texas, but we very much have a climate here that's not as nearly as brutal. So the bees are more active during the winter than they would be up north. And so when they're more active, they do consume more food. So we've got to keep them fed. People think, oh, well, they're not eating anything in the winter. Yeah, they do. They need to have either the winter stores of capped, neck, uh, capped honey nearby um, or possibly open nectar which is easy for them to consume that's the first thing they're going to consume is the open nectar that hasn't been dried out yet yeah. I'm going to do a little thin pan next because I do have some sugar left in here. All right, so this batch so far is made 12 ish, um, a little bit thin. that away from the camera. I'm right-handed and so it's easier for me to work with my hands that way. And we're just going to thin that out so it's pretty level-ish. It's maybe a little thin. Okay. And again, we're going to tamp this down. Throw it in the dehydrator. This is the last one of this batch. I'm going to make one more batch today. And I'm just about out of sugar and have to make an inventory run. Um, so that's basically how it's done. Those will sit in there for the next day that I'm able to get out into the field. It rained last night, so I anticipate probably at least two days before I can get out into a field. That's why I'm going ahead and making these now so that they'll be dry in two days and ready to, to put in the hives. All right, guys, thanks for uh, in, enduring this uh, in my garage moment so you can see a little bit of what I do. And this is wintertime. You know, there's still plenty to do. I've got stacks of thousands of frames that need to be repaired. I've got thousands and thousands of foundations that need to be cleaned um, and then re-waxed. I'll do that later and get ready for spring. Uh, wintertime is not necessarily a time to hibernate. All right, guys. See y'all.